Welcome back YouTubers to my channel of an everyday life of an Aspie. If you're following me right now, right now I'm doing some of the nitty gritty stuff that needs to be clearly addressed. Like I said, because obviously this is one of them obviously that's close to my heart to share with you all right now. Which hopefully I won't get a bit of a, you know, <sighs> or hate or whatever it may be. Because obviously this is something that I've been dealing with in the past. And I want to actually basically share it because this is real and it needs to be addressed. As well as some other nitty gritty topics that will be coming onto my channel so I humbly apologize if you're looking for some other bits and pieces of whatever it is on my channel it should still be there but if you can't find what you're looking for please comment below so maybe I can do some research and share with you all based on what you may be looking for so these ones are about the how to's and the narcissist versus psychopath sociopathic kind of like behaviors what to look out for obviously so you know the warning signs so that you can get out if you feel unsafe or what have you so this one's on how to deal with narcissists so bear with me on this and I humbly apologize. So let's begin this. As we know, narcissists uh, can be really difficult people to deal with. Their minds are limited in a way that prevents them from truly looking outside themselves and the world all around them are limited entirely to the internal while excluding the external. There are many circumstances that could have caused someone to develop this kind of personality trait and many forms of narcissism but there are also a few best practices for you guys to look at that you can implement when dealing with just about any narcissist. So that's why I'm here today to address these. So there's hopefully three parts to dealing with this. So num part one is dealing with a narcissist long term. Number one, learn to identify a narcissist. Before you start tossing the word around of this, you need to remember that a lot of people have, have some narcissistic tendencies but aren't necessarily na narcissists. But learning what makes a narcissist, you'll be able to better avoid them and deal with the ones who already are in your life. A narcissist lacks empathy. This is a big indicator that someone is more than simply self-obsessed. A narcissist simply cannot understand other other person's point of view and cannot feel what other people feel, which means that they only act upon themselves to help themselves. For example, someone at work gets a bigger promotion instead of congratulating that person. The narcissist has to turn the spotlight back onto themselves by talking about why they should have gotten the promotion instead of simply about something really good that happened to them. A narcissist also has a little to no insight into their own actions. They need to be constantly admired and feel entitled to get the best treatment and to be unquestionably compliant from everyone in their life. To know whether or not you are dealing with a narcissist, ask yourself a series of questions. Does the suspected narcissist behave as though the world revolves around them? Do they need to be complimented before giving you their attention if you disagree with them? Do they attempt to shut you down? Are your feelings being minimized? Are your conversations always redirected so they become about the narcissist? If the answers to any of these questions are yes, you might be really are dealing with a narcissist. Two, figure out your own needs. If you are in need of someone who can provide mutual support and understanding, it is best to limit the time you spend with narcissists in favour of others who can provide you with more of what you need. On the other hand, if the narcissist in your life is interesting or vibrant in other ways and you don't need any additional support, friendship or relationship, can work for the time being. You might need to make sure that you're not harming yourself by staying in contact with narcissists. This is especially true if you have a close relationship with one such as a spouse or a parent or whoever because your time will be more taken up by them. If you find yourself exhausted by their neediness, they need constant validation, praise, attention and a wavering patience, then you need to rethink your relationship with them. If you are being abused by them, manipulated, constantly talked down to, treated like you have no value, you need to get out immediately because they are these are dangerous for your health. 3. Accept your their limitations. If this person is truly important to you, you will need to accept his or her narcissism. Stop asking or demanding support or attention from the narcissist that he or she is unable to provide. Doing so will accomplish nothing but making you feel more frustrated and disappointed, which will only damage the relationship more. For example, if you know that your friend Stephen is a narcissist, don't keep trying to bring up your own troubles with him because he simply will not be able to empathize and will quickly turn the conversation back to himself. Four, define your own self-worth by other means. Ideally, self-worth is built from the inside out rather than being dependent on the outside support. But for many, self-worth grows stronger when others affirm their systems by valuing them as individuals. Don't go to a narcissist when looking for this type of support though, since the narcissist will not be able to provide it for you. Understand that even if you confide in that person, he or she will be unable to truly value the weight of what you've shared. They may in fact use this knowledge and means as a means to manipulate 
manipulate you so be con careful of what you tell a narcissist. Remember the narcissist's motto is me first. When dealing with them you will have to operate under their motto. Five, try to have compassion. This might be easier said than done but remember in spite of all the supposed self-confidence the narcissist does display towards you, deep down there is a severe lack of true confidence that requires the constant approval of others to subdue. Moreover, the narcissist does not have a full life because he or she shuts down a wide range of emotions. This doesn't mean letting them do whatever they want with you. It means that you remember the, that the narcissist is a human being who has been too into somebody who can't connect with other people. This often happens as a result of narcissist's appearance. Also remember that narcissists have no understanding of unconditional love. Everything they do comes under the purpose of how it best serves them, which is a temporarily lonely way to live. It may help you to have compassion if you can remember these negative behaviours that are projections of their own self-hatred and feelings of inadequacy. Part 2. Dealing with narcissists in the short term. 1. Avoid the mind games. A lot of narcissists play mind games that force you to constantly be on the defensive, that which will show them up. Show them up, I should say. The best way to deal with these games is to recognise the game and stop playing the games. To deal with the narcissist, you have to t keep your ego out of the running. Get out of the playing the blame game. A narcissist obviously cannot do any wrong in their own mindset, which means they need someone to blame for their own failures and disappointments. And at some point, it's going to be you. And stop trying to argue or explain how it's their fault or get emotionally invested. Do some, do have some set boundaries. You have to keep track of what they are doing, so you can, in a non accusatory tone, say, Hey Steve, here's the inventory count which shows we do need more paper. Narcissists tend to be really good at lying, or are really good liars. If you remember something very different from them, especially if it puts them in a bad light, don't start doubting yourself, don't try to argue it, however, unless you have absolute empirical evidence that you're right. Even then, a narcissist will manage to turn the whole thing around and really well on them. The most important thing to remember is to cultivate a non responsive attitude towards them. If you have a narcissist in your life, they'll be jabs, put down and lies, don't respond. It's like a game of catch and you'll never find a way to catch a ball and throw it back. Let the ball, the insults, mind games, etc. So I'll right back on past. Two, don't expect to please the narcissist. Since the narcissist has a large ego and thinks overly well for themselves, they will likely see you as someone who is in some ways inferior. You might be able to win the narcissist's favour on a short term basis, but you should never expect to be able to satisfy or impress a narcissist in the long term. Be prepared to fall short in their estimation often. You will never be able to live up to what they expect you to be, which is someone who dances complete attention on them. Try not to take their criticism to heart by reminding yourself that it comes from a very off-balance worldview. Likewise, don't try to argue your merits with the narcissist because they will be unable to hear you if they constantly be living you. Whoever it may be, whether it's your spouse, parent, boss, find someone you trust to talk over what they say. A trusted friend counsellor if you can. Get some spouse from narcissists for recovery purposes. 3. Listen a lot. If you have to engage with a narcissist, the best way to deal with it is to simply listen. The narcissist will demand your attention in your ear and more likely to get angry or cold with you if you neglect to provide it. Everything has its limits though and if the narcissist in your life is demanding your attention at a time you can't provide, you should never cave in. If you plan on being a fr in a friendship or other relationship with a narcissist, however, you should be prepared to de deal with a great lis listening in regards to that person. If you find your mind strong, ask them for clarif clarification on an earlier point that you remember so that you find your back way back to that conversation. For example, you might say, I was thinking about what you said about X and you didn't hear what you just said. Could you repeat that? Four, be as genuine in your praise as possible. In all likelihood though, there is some quality about the narcissist in your life that you admire. Build the majority of your praise around that quality and we'll see more in sincere which will keep you in the narcissist's good graces and good books. And it will also be a constant reminder to yourself about why you keep this person in your life. For example, if your narcissist is a really good writer, make sure that you tell them that. Say things like, you're really, you're really articulate. I love the way you manage to get your ideas across so clearly. They'll recognize your honesty and they'll be less likely to try to attack you. If you really want to get them into your good books, you can say something like, you are much better at writing than me. I never quite got the hang of expressing myself clearly. You build them up in opposition to you and the world, which makes them feel better about themselves. Don't do this to the point that you start believing that they do everything better than you. Compliment them often on the personal attributes they are most proud of. Narcissists need much more affirmation and attention than most. They will bask in compliments and value the relationship. However, they are still likely to try and find ways to undercut and control you due to their cut deep insecurities. Their methods 
can be very subtle and sophisticated, so on. Be on your guard though. Five, smile and nod. If the narcissist in your life is someone you can't choose to avoid contact with and you find yourself unable to tolerate flattering that person as often as necessary, best, next best option is to keep quiet. You will not gain any favour with the narcissist by keeping your mouth shut, by, but not, by not agreeing with that person, you basically give the impression of agreement. Since the narcissist demands constant attention, smiling and nodding, it's a good way to give them without having to commit yourself to further interaction. This method works particularly well for others or for those narcissists who aren't extra inextricably intertwined in your life like a co-worker or a friend that you're not support, supposedly super close to. 6. Persuade the narcissist that what you want benefits them. If you need something from a narcissist, the best way to get it is to frame the request in a way that suggests the narcissist that there will be some benefits to him or her providing it. For example, if you want to persuade your best female friend to a, get a, go to a new restaurant with you and her narcissism revolves around her social standing, say something along the lines, I hear it's the best place to go if you want to rub elbows with all the influential people in the community. As another example, if you want to see an exhibit with your best male friend and this narcissism revolves around all his intelligence, you could say something like, they say it's especially intriguing for clever people with quick mind. 7. Present constructive criticism in decile terms. Narcissus will never accept blunted criticism. He or she will probably assume that you are either jealous or simply ornery or and will devalue your opinion even more as a result. Avoid inflicting humiliation, even though it might be tempting to do so. Frame things in a way that invites the narcissist to believe that he or she still has the upper hand. For instance, if you need to re remind a narcissist client sister client to pay you, gently remind that individual by asking them for a reminder of the agreed upon pay period rather than directly stating that the payment is late. Part 3. Staging an intervention. 1. Continent intervention. Sometimes, especially when the narcissist is someone you love, a significant other, parent or child, you may want to consider staging an intervention. This can be very difficult as a narcissistic person can be very difficult to convince that there is something wrong with them. The best time to stage an intervention is after something very life changing has happened to the narcissist, like an illness, a job loss, etc., where the things that are feeding their ego are damaged or removed. 2. Get the help of a professional. You'll need a ne neutral and experienced party. As things can get emotional and stormy during this intervention stage, they can also help you plan the intervention and give you some idea how the intervention might go. A professional can discuss with you different options for therapy that might you might try to convince your narcissist to undertake. Individual psychotherapy and group therapy both have their benefits and have been shown to help narcissistic individuals regulate their individuality, build their ability to see people as people, individuals who are important, who are as important as they are. Look around in your area and ask some people whose opinions you trust whom they might recommend. You want to make sure that you have the right person for the task. Three, recruit about four or five people. These people need to be people who are close to the narcissist in some way or have been hurt by the narcissist but are willing to see them get the help they need. Make sure these, that these people aren't going to warn narcissists ahead of time and aren't going to spread gossip around about what is going on. Full. Plan the intervention. You don't want to do, do this as a spur moment of thing, of course. You will need to plan out where and when and what you will, all are going to say and do. The professional help team can help you there with some of the what you might expect from the intervention. You will need to develop a couple of talking points. These are the main points that you want to stick to during the intervention. They can be things like the narcissist issues are hurting the family, give specific examples on why you're having the intervention. They've become abusive or they have stopped contributing to the family. Again, you want to be specific. You need to have some sort of a consequence for their actions as if they do so refuse the intervention. This could This could be anything from any of the relationship or not participating in activities that are important to the narcissist. This gives you a sort of leverage for them to change. 5. Make it clear how the narcissists are hurting themselves. It's important they use your comparison during the intervention stage, since the reasoning you're doing it so that they can have a chance to get better. Use I statements such as, I feel ignored when you constantly turn the conversation to yourself, or I feel they expect me to be constantly emotionally available without providing me with any emotional support in return. Going use these specific examples of the times that they have hurt you and you should be able to get them to see it in a better light. Well, this quickly 
she is about how to deal with the marcuses give me a like for thumbs up for support comment below follow me through my social media sites listed below also feel free to share these videos around to family and friends like i said you want to create this as our winners and i'm saying feel free to subscribe to me if you know if you haven't done so feel free to turn on the notification bell so you know what's going on with me so in all further ado guys thanks for support thanks for watching do what you love love what you do until next time sp signing out and i'll see you again